Hey guys, it's Alyssa from AlyssaMalani.com, and today I just wanted to share with you what I am doing in my personal daily Bible study. Now, you may remember this book from the video that I did quite a while back when I shared how I had this set up for my Bible study. Well, I am no longer in this book anymore. Um, two reasons, um, the first being that for some reason, you guys, I cannot do rings. This is a ring binder that I have used, I've tried to use so many times for, tr for so many different things and just have not, it's just, I, I don't know why, but rings just don't work for me. So that was the first reason. The second reason was because um, I had put so many sections in this book and my brain just wasn't engaging with it. And I'm not saying that a whole Bible study journal is bad or that having sections is bad um, because there are a lot of really great setups out there that I, and that it, they seem to be working for other people. I'm just saying for myself, I needed to simplify it and then build up. So I decided to kind of scale back, put this aside. As you can see, I still have it set up because I may use it in the future but I needed to scale back and start more simply and build up. So I went and got another bullet journal. <laughs> this is an artist loft book from Michaels. Um, you can also use a, uh, a Leuchtturm 1917, of course, or like a Rhodia. Um, I'll have some linked below if you don't, if you're looking for a place to buy one, but this one I got at Michaels and I just started to experiment. Now, right before I decided to do this, I had read a book that kind of helped me solidify this idea of simplification for my, um, for my system. And it's called Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin. And it is such a good book, you guys. I listened to it on audio first, and then I went ahead and bought a hard copy for myself for reference. And it's a really great audiobook read. Um, it's a great listen. So if you um, prefer audiobooks, I highly recommend it. Um, and it's not very long. It's a short book. You can get through it pretty quickly if you make the time. <laughs> and she had some really, really great practical advice. And so as I was kind of putting this together in my head, I thought that the practical advice that she gave, I really wanted to try in a bullet journal. So this is what I'm gonna show you. Now, when I first bought this, this is what I did. I, I ended up tearing the pages out, but I'm gonna try and show you what the original looked like. Okay, so I had a title page, and then I wrote down some of the notes um, from the book, as well as from a workshop on YouTube that she did with Matt Chandler. And I'll have that linked below as well, so you can check that out. But basically, I just kind of wanted to set up what um, I wanted to do in the book. So for every book study that I did, so I, this was for studying books of the Bible, I was going to have a title page, an introduction page, or spread, that would include the author, the audience, the time, the place, the main message or theme, <clears throat> the genre, the sections of the book, um, and then I was going to read the text and outline it, um, and then add any notes, um, like my thoughts and observations of the text. And then I just had um, the other notes from the book and the workshop, okay? And I have like these stickers here and some um, washi strips there. And then the next pages were going to be my, I actually only have one. <laughs> so this is my title page for the book of Philippians. And I had an introduction and then I included the author who is the Apostle Paul, the audience who is the church at Philippi, and the time that it was written, which was around AD 63, the place um, from which it was written, um, which was probably from a prison in Rome. And then the main message or theme of the book is joy, the genre, it's an epistle. And then these are the sections of the book that are in my Bible. Okay, so my Bible has study notes in it and it has all of this information that I was able to pull and put into an introduction spread. Okay, so I did all of this, and for some reason, my brain still was not engaging with this. And I thought, what is up with it that I can't figure out how I want to 
take notes as I'm reading the Bible and like study it and get into it. So I was, I knew I wanted the bullet journal thing. I knew that was the right book, the right format. I just didn't know how to set it up inside. So I started watching bullet journal videos and found that what intrigued me about bullet journal videos is the different ways that you can make them aesthetically pleasing. And so I thought, oh, well, I really liked what I had done in my Crafty Commonplace book. Why don't I take that um, uh, principle and put it in my Bible study bullet journal? So this is what I did. I went on Pinterest and I started printing out pictures that I found on Pinterest. Hey, these are not mine. These are my personal use. I got them off of the internet. And I started putting them in. And then I wrote the exact same thing I wrote in the previous pages, only I had some pictures to go with it. Super simple, a glue stick and some pictures. Title page, this is the setup. Title page, an introduction spread with all that information. Read an outline, study notes. I have the five P's of Bible study from the book. And then all the notes from that workshop. I wrote with my Tombow pens instead of just regular pens and just had these pictures. And then I did a title page, as you can see, with some scraps and a beautiful picture of flowers on this bicycle. And my brain was starting to engage you guys. Here's the introduction to the book of Philippians. I used some of these stickers that I had in one of my sticker books. And then I started writing notes. So the outline, so I'm in Philippians chapter one, the outline, this is the theme that is in my, in my Bible. And then I just kind of out, I looked in my Bible and um, wrote down the different sections in that chapter. I made a space for vocabulary words that I um, wanted to find the, the, not the descriptions, but the definitions for. And then I would write the text in black. And then any cross-reference verses that I found, I would write them in pink. And this is what I've been doing the past several days all the while just adding these pictures. So what I do is I keep a collection of them. I have these all printed out and I keep them in the back of my journal. And after I cut them out, whenever I'm ready to pick one, I round the corners with my corner rounder. I have this corner rounder. It's got three different sizes. I don't know if you can see it, large, medium, and small. So I corner round them. This is how I do it. Just, if you've never used a corner rounder, this is how it works. So let's say I wanted to use the large, it's like a hole punch. And you just snip it, snip it, snip it, and snip, okay? And it just gives it a little bit more, um, I don't even know what it gives it. <laughs> It gives a little bit more cohesion because the corners of my book are also rounded so that it kind of mimics that. So I have all these little pictures and literally you guys, this is what I do. I take them. And I sit in the back of my book and that's it. That is it. And so as I'm reading my Bible, I'll put in stickers. These are some stickers here. And then, um, so, like I was saying, um, cross-reference verses go in pink, and then my thoughts and observations go in blue. And it goes right, right, right. And then I've got chapter two, the outline, the theme, and then the different um, um, the verses as they are um, titled, subtitled, there we go subtitled in my Bible, some vocabulary words going here, 
and what I do with my vocabulary words. So I mainly read out of the King James. That's my main um, Bible that I read out of. And then I also use um, an ESV along with that just to get some different wording. And then along with that, I use a Strong's Concordance alongside the King James if I want to know what the original text meant um, in the context of the passage in the original language in the Hebrew or in the Greek. So I pull out my Strong's and I look up the words and I only just started doing this. I should have done it and I'm not very consistent with it, but I write the reference down. So um, if you've ever used a Strong's, you look up the word and then it gives you the place to search for the definition in um, the back of the book and that's the reference number. So you can look up the meaning of the word. So I use my Strong's, I have a couple different versions of the Bible as I'm reading, and then I just write down um, the verse and then my cross-reference verses and then what I think. And you guys, I am having such a good time. There's just enough pretty in here to kind of break up the monotony of just text, right? Which is what I was doing in my Crafty Commonplace book. But it's not so much that it's distracting me from the study itself, right? Um, the other thing that I did, I actually did this yesterday. I um, wrote some lyrics to a song that I was reminded of as I was writing some of my thoughts and observations. And I did that in a different blue ink. And then more cross-reference verses <laughs> and more thoughts. And so just pictures, you guys. Just get on Google or get on Pinterest and print out some pictures and you can make a plain old bullet journal so pretty in your Bible study. And it's a lot simpler. Now, I do plan to get more in depth in my notes. So um, this is just, I'm just starting out. I'm figuring out a groove, I'm figuring out a pattern, I'm figuring out a method, but I, um, I just wanted one journal and then I wanted a little bit of pretty. So I have my, pic my pictures, my photos, and then I have my sticker books on hand too if I wanna add some stickers as well. And that's it, you guys, that is what I'm doing. <laughs> Super simple. So I encourage you, if you're at a point where maybe there's just a little too much in a whole Bible study system, like the ones that are super popular right now on YouTube in the community, this might not be for you right now. And that's okay. If you have one and it's not working, try to scale it back a little bit and see what happens. Just grab a journal and start writing out scripture. Write out the cross-references and then write down what your thoughts are on those cross-references and main texts. And, um, and see what you find. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your, your eyes and your heart um, as you're studying. It doesn't have to be complicated. And then as you grow and mature in the word, and as you figure out, um, you know, how, what your learning style is, as you develop that, you can bring more stuff in. But if you're like me and you needed something simple, definitely give it a try. And if you have not checked it out, Women of the Word by Jen Wilkin, you will really enjoy it. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you are having a great day. I plan to write a blog post to go along with this video, so go ahead and look for it down below. And if you have any questions, you know where to leave them. I love reading your comments. And for now, I will see you all in the next video. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.